Welcome to Noob Aquatics, this is Matthew again. Thanks for coming back. So today we're going to make some uh, homemade Pleco caves. And uh, in these Pleco caves we are using PVC pipe and an end cap. Now one of them is going to be for breeding and the other two are just going to be caves for some Plecos that we got extra at the auction. So I needed one male Brit, uh, super red bristlenose Pleco and ended up with three. So now I got two males in separate 20 gallon tanks and uh, the, the male that I like to pick out to see if we can get her, him to breed with my female we got in the uh, the main display tank but also side note for our puffer tank we got a giant otosynclus alright we're gonna see how he does if he does really well then we'll try with some smaller ones because this tank is just, it gets dirty, it's hard to clean, you can see the plants don't get cleaned off. Uh, mainly because none of the normal cleaners stay alive in there. These puffers, they kill the shrimp and they kill uh, snails. So, it's different. Some people may be able to house shrimp in there with pea puffers, but so far we, we can't. But we did notice that they leave this uh, otosynclus alone. So that's a good sign. So we may end up getting some more smaller ones. Just two, but as you can see there is a lot a lot of algae growth in here there's a whole bunch back there all over the rocks so that's another side note now let's get back to uh, uh, building these uh, pleco caves so I'm gonna hand the phone over to my wife now and she's going to record me out here cutting these I'll have these on um, but she will have my hearing protection on I don't I can't hear out of my right ear anyways very well so that's my hearing protection technically but so that's what she'll get. So I'm gonna give it to her now. So you see I got a PVC pipe. This is a two inch PVC pipe. I'm gonna cut them at six inches. Down the mark here, I gotta make three of them. All right, and uh, then I'm gonna sand them down. So I got it on the wood for stability. I got them locked down good and tight. And I'm gonna use a circular saw because this is all I have. So we'll see if it works. I'm gonna cut one side and then I'm gonna go on and cut the other side. So let's see if we can get it to cut. One. Now, one thing you'll notice here is I'm using tape. See the tape here? That helps minimize the amount of shards and stuff that come off of it and splintering. So that's a good thing to notice.
All right, so that is that is it for the sanding of the outside, cutting it. Now, I'm not going to show all three. I'm just showing you how to make one. I'm doing the breeder uh, tube first. So this right here, it'll go on the end. Now, you'll want to make sure you put a mark or something here because you don't want it to go all the way. So if the plecos go into the cave, you know, the female goes in there, the male goes in there and traps her in there to breed. When they lay the eggs in the back, you need to be able to get this off easily so that you can take the eggs out all right if you need to if you are leaving them in the cave to hatch in there then that's fine you can leave it on there never have to worry about taking it off but if you want to take them out so that you can put them into an egg tumbler into their own uh, grow out tank that type of thing then you want to make sure that you stop it at a certain point so that you can take it off easily and get those eggs out the next step after you got the outside sanded you're gonna to have to sand on the inside. Now, this is a really smooth surface. So the reason why you're sanding it on the inside and sanding it back here is so that the eggs can actually stick. If it's really smooth, you, uh, smooth, you may have a little bit of trouble get uh, the plecos, not you, of course. <laughs> the plecos may have a little trouble getting the eggs to stick to the wall. So the next step is sanding it down by hand, unfortunately. So now we got it rinsed off. It's rough on the outside, cleaned off. There's no ink or anything like that. They'll leach in the water. This is, you know, water grade, of course, or whatever you want to call it, kitchen grade, whatever. It's safe uh, for the water. So um, the reason why I sandpapered the outside was to, for two reasons. Like I just mentioned, is to get all the ink off, all the labels off, so it's just solid white. And I needed a surface that was a little bit more rough so that when I attach the java moss to it, so from the top half of it right here, there's going to be java moss attached to it to kind of give it more of a uh, blending into the environment type color. It'll be like this, you know, and it'll go in here. This will be able to come off pretty easily, assuming it's not stuck on there really well because of algae growing. But yeah, so I'll attach some java moss to it on the top part right here. 
and then I'll attach some Java moss to the top part right here so that it's not connected ish <laughs> because once the Java moss grabs a hold of this in the back right here it may latch over and start grabbing this and kind of connect but you can just take a knife or something and cut it and still be able to get this off again that's assuming that you're taking the eggs out so that you can artificially hatch them in an egg tumbler or in a grow out tank with a little bit extra air so let's go get the java moss added on there and uh, you'll see the final product all right so like i said you need to rinse off and wash your pvc pipe the best thing to do is make sure you get all the particulates and everything off of there so that there's none that you're introducing into your aquarium um, you don't want them to eat little pieces of plastic or anything like that so uh, that they die you don't want your you don't want to be the cause of their death but pvc pipe is considered to be aquarium safe um, main thing I would recommend is sanding the entire thing like I did so you can remove any sharp pieces all right so that it's smooth all around remove any labels or anything like that any names any ink all of that so like I said we are going to attach Java moss so you're gonna need scissors you're gonna need your all-purpose thread or glue I'm using thread because it's just easier to get off afterwards glue once you put glue on there you can't it's harder to get the glue off so thread is my recommended one because you wrap it around there and when the java moss actually attaches to it in like two to three months you go in there and you clip the java you clip the uh, thread pull it off and your java moss is permanently on the device so next thing you're going to need is java moss as you can see here we got plenty of it it's in pretty much all our tanks all right we got even more you can see here all of this look at all this java moss okay stinky yeah so if you keep java moss in a bucket you have to change out the water uh, about every week or so so that's another recommendation there um, change out the water keep it next to a semi you know light source i guess because if you don't after a week or so it starts getting a little stinky so now this has all been disinfected and everything so what I mean by that is that this right here, even though it's been pulled out of another aquarium, we have uh, disinfected it with uh, bleach. So we put it in a bleach solution, disinfected it, got rid of any snails, eggs, anything like that from the uh, Java moss um, before we introduce it to new aquariums. Though we don't really mind the snails because the snails become food for other things in our house um, or they clean up the aquarium, anything like that. So I'm gonna take a large chunk of Java moss on here because I like Java moss. It's a good cleanup thing. All right, make sure it's only on one side. All right, and I got the cap on there because I want to make sure the cap is separate. All right, and remember, we're doing this to kind of make it blend in. So you can put it in there straight without the Java moss if you want. That's okay too. I'm only doing it because I'm trying to make it look more natural without having to spend hundreds of dollars on terracotta pots or anything like that so Now, why did I decide to make these just now? Because like I said, I got 
some new plecos because I had a female super red pleco. I knew this because of how old she is and the fact that she has no bristles whatsoever. So after a certain point in time, if they don't develop any bristles or they have those teeny, 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 tiny bristles in the front that you can barely see, I'd say 10 months or so, something like that. Um, there's just a point where you just know that it's a female. So, so let's take a look. Over here. You'll see the females in the top right corner back there. I don't know if you see her, she's back there. Yeah. So you see my female's right there. She's in the back, hard to see, but you can see her tail. That's the female right there. And then the male, you see the big difference? You see the bristles on his nose? That's my male right there. He's hiding underneath that stick, but that's my that's my new male. So, if I can, I'm gonna find a place for this in the back for them to uh, do their due diligence deeds. So. We got our cave in there and I have no doubt that over time that'll turn green in the front with, with you know, mold, not mold, with uh, algae. <laughs> yeah. Looks like mold because it's green. Yeah. Um, so hopefully the plecos will enjoy that. Um, if not, I know my uh, pistogramas will. <laughs> yeah, you might have the like, pisto eggs in there. They like caves and I may end up with a pisto eggs inside that, uh, you know, inside that thing. So it happens. Well. Thank you so much for coming along on our journey here to make that new uh, Pleco Cave right there. We hope that you find this video uh, intriguing and interesting, or at least, and uh, uh, hopefully it helps you determine on how to make a Pleco Cave. Now keep in mind, the PVC pipe was $3. The Java Moss I already had around the house because it grows and grows and grows and grows if you've got the right lighting and nutrients. And, uh, then you just you can use regular sandpaper and do it by hand or you can use an electric sander either one's up to you but i got three more to make and those take a little while so but i won't i won't bore you with the details on that you got to see how one was made and how we're going to make the others and we're going to put them into our 20 lungs so one there and one there all right and then i'm gonna make a third one and that third one's just going to go in here for whatever <laughs> so yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming to Noob Aquatics. If you liked the video, subscribe, like, and you have a wonderful day.